Today I want to talk about something that came up in last week's student call. It's a question that has a very simple and very straightforward answer. The question was, should I use a dedicated server or build my game peer-to-peer? -peer? This is for multiplayer game developers, and if you don't know the difference between the two, I'll explain them really quick, and then I'll give you a couple questions you can ask yourself to make this decision really simple. Let's start with what the differences are. First, peer-to-peer. Peer-to-peer gaming or peer-to-peer -peer networking is a setup where your client or your player also hosts the game. So one of your clients, usually the first one to start a game, will be the server or the host as well as the player and client. This happens by running a server process and a client process together. They're actually running in the same Unity instance. It's really just one process or one instance, but it handles the networking in a way that makes it seem like you're sending messages from a client to a server. You're just handling them on that same system so they kind of get passed along without needing to go over the network. There are some good advantages to this, but also some big negatives. The first and super obvious negative is that the host or the one that's running the game, the first player in there, can usually cheat pretty easily. It's very difficult to stop them from cheating because they're running as the server. So they're kind of the authoritative part. You know, there are some ways that you can work around this and make it um, so that all of the clients have to agree on stuff, but it's still not easy to prevent cheating. And if you want to have a large scale, massive setup where like th there's items and the things that people get actually matter and there's competition there, then this runs or this causes a lot of problems. But it does have a lot of big advantages too. First, it's super easy to manage. You don't need to worry about setting up dedicated servers. You don't need to worry about, um, well, mostly set, setting up dedicated servers, hosting those and maintaining and managing those. Instead, what you have to worry about is setting up uh, matchmaking systems. You do need to have a lobby and then ideally some sort of a relay system to connect people who have a network set up like most of us do, where you've got a firewall in your router at home and you need to be able to get through that. A relay system usually makes that very easy and kind of simplifies it. Also works great for mobile devices, but those are relatively cheap compared to the other option, which is dedicated servers. If you want to set up your game with dedicated servers, you're probably 99 out of 100 times going to need to host your own servers. You're going to need to actually pay for those servers and have them up and running constantly or have them up and spinning up on demand at least as needed. And then you're going to be paying whenever players are playing your actual game. So the real question here comes down, oh, well, first let's talk about one of the advantages. The biggest advantage with dedicated servers is that you can control cheating. You can pretty much stop cheating. Of course, you can write bad code and allow for cheating. It's, it's super easy. A lot of games, most games with dedicated servers still end up with some sort of cheating just to, due to bad code. But you can catch that stuff and fix it, unlike in a peer-to-peer -peer game where you don't really have control. With dedicated servers, you got full control over everything. So you can stop that cheating. You also don't have a host side advantage. So if you want to build a competitive game, dedicated servers are almost always the way to go because you're going to have it, well, unless you're doing like a fighting game. There's cer certain specific scenarios where that's not the case. But for most games, dedicated servers are the way to go for a competitive one because you don't end up with an advantage for a specific host. You don't have to worry about cheating. Servers are always kind of up and available, assuming that you run and host them and pay for them. Now, the big downside, of course, here is cost. So when you're thinking about what you want to do, what type of game you want to build, first thing you're going to need to think about is, do I want to pay for dedicated servers? Am I going to want to pay for this hosting continuously? Is the game going to generate money to cover that? I mean, if your game has a subscription service or microtransactions or something that gets money generating constantly and the dedicated servers can be paid for through that, then it might be a good option. Um, if not, then you might need to consider going to something like a peer-to-peer -peer setup or another alternative, two actual other alternatives that I want to talk about. First is having dedicated servers, but allowing your players to host their own servers. This doesn't stop them from cheating completely because 
they can just modify the server and then do some cheating in that setup. But then you can have like a small number of official servers, keep your costs down, and then let your players run their own servers that they can all connect to and play on. Those players can build out mods for those things and do stuff to make it a lot more exciting and interesting. This is probably the option that I would go with. Although I would also add on this last thing, which is that you can really do both. And if you're building out a multiplayer game with most multiplayer frameworks nowadays, I think it's pretty easy to support hosted, like client server hosted peer to peer along with dedicated servers. You don't have to do too much code differences or you don't have to change your code too much to support both of them. Going from one to the other is pretty simple and supporting both of them isn't too much more work. So I would highly recommend if you're considering dedicated servers and you're not all, all in on peer to peer that you just do both, or at least look at both. It'll make your development process a lot easier. It'll make your players probably a lot happier, and it'll uh, hopefully make your game just work out better. Of course, if you're building an MMO or something, that's not gonna work, but you know, that, that's then you're stuck with dedicated servers. What, what can I say? Anyway, I hope this was helpful. If you got questions about this or comments or thoughts of stuff that I missed, please drop them down below. Otherwise, just hit the thumbs up button and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one. Hey, I was editing this and I realized something that I wanted to quickly clarify. When we're talking about peer-to-peer -peer networking in this video and in the Unity context with netcode for game objects at least, it's important to note that it's not actually peer-to-peer, -peer, it's really peer-to-host and it's really client-hosted. It's not, peer-to-peer -peer is technically when your clients are actually sending messages to each other and the way that it actually works in Unity systems and most networking systems is more like a star system where the clients send the message to the host and then the host sends those messages back out to the the, the other players. So it's not direct peer-to-peer -peer where each one of the clients is directly communicating with each other. That gets even more complicated, a lot more difficult to deal with and causes some uh, I would say other confusion and other problems, unless it's a direct game. This is the problem. So a lot of the time when we're talking peer-to-peer, -peer, and this is kind of where the confusion comes from, we're talking about peer-to-peer -peer games. Um, a lot, most of the time, I would say majority of the time, it's just with these one-on-one -on -one games, in which case a client hosted and game like that is essentially the same as peer-to-peer. -peer. And that, that's kind of where that terminology comes from. And I, I felt like it's important to clarify that after watching through and stuff. Um, I realize that that's probably going to confuse people, and I hope that this clarification helps. If so, um, don't forget to hit the thumbs up and all that stuff. Bye.